A coalition of business groups in Canada is calling on the federal government to prevent a work stoppage at Canada's two biggest railways. In a joint statement, the groups say the federal labour minister should refer the dispute to the Canada Industrial Relations Board for binding arbitration. Alternatively, the groups say the government can use back-to-work legislation. A work stoppage could come as soon as tomorrow, either by strike or lockout. Ford is recalibrating its electrification strategy one more time, including cancelling plans for a fully electric sport utility vehicle. Ford is scrapping an all-electric three-row SUV that had already been delayed. That vehicle was supposed to be built at Ford's plant in Oakville, Ontario. Ford will further position a next-generation electric pickup and reduce spending overall on EVs. Shares of Macy's are under pressure down, as you can see, by 11%. The department store operator missed analyst expectations for its quarterly revenue and lowered its outlook for sales for the rest of the year. Macy's is blaming increased discounting by competitors and a more cautious U.S. consumer. The company's been working on a strategy of closing stores that have falling sales and investing in other stores where sales have been more robust. Back we go to the markets, there's a more positive picture that we saw just about half an hour ago. We now have the major North American indices up by uh, uh, almost exactly a quarter of a percentage point apiece, including right here in Toronto. Most influential gainer in Toronto at this moment, Nutrien, followed by Constellation Software, Shopify, Suncor Energy and Canadian Natural Resources. Welcome back. U.S. retailer Target is surging after beating market expectations and reporting positive same-store sales for the first time uh, in four quarters. It's also raising raising its profit guidance. My next guest says the U.S. consumer is going strong for now, but he wants the U.S. Fed to start lowering rates soon to stop any cracks or further deterioration in the labor market. Let's go to our, our guest. He's Ryan Dietrich, Chief Market Strategist at Carson Group. Ryan, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, what do you expect uh, Jerome Powell to say uh, on Friday at, at Jackson uh, Hole, and what should be the Fed strategy from here? Yeah, Paul, thanks for having me back, and happy Wednesday, everyone. So we've been in the camp. I've come on with you for a while saying this. Inflation is last year's problem in the, in the U.S. PPI and CPI last week further confirmed that. Yes, we think the Fed probably should have cut it to her last meeting. Um, there was Now everyone's wondering, will they do 25? Will they do 50 at the next meeting in September? Uh, we think 25 makes sense. I mean, 50 feels like, oh, boy, they were behind the curve. And they were behind the curve, or they are behind the curve, in our opinion. And we think he's just going to set the stage uh, for that on Friday. But I think what we're more, well, not more interested in, but equally looking at is his take on the economy. Because like you just talked about, Macy's had something to say, didn't sound all that great. But then Target had something to say, sounded like the consumer is good. The truth, as usually, is somewhere kind of in the middle. Our take, we get more into this if you want to, the economy is slowing in the U.S., but slowing does not mean you have to go into a recession. We think this is more of a mid-cycle slowdown. And overall, the consumer is still in pretty good shape, we would say, overall in the United States. Uh, and why is the consumer in, in uh, such good shape with, with, the, uh, with the deterioration we've seen in the labor market? And might further deterioration uh, change the, the complexion of the state of the U.S. consumer? It might. And again, that's kind of where the Fed cuts come in, because, again, inflation's last year's problem. So we've seen some weakening. We know we saw a little bit of a spike in the unemployment rate, you know, last month here in the United States. I know just an hour or so ago, they revised the number of jobs created the past year in the, in the United States by a large number, over, over 800,000. That was actually fairly expected. Market is rallying on that. Um, so, again, the big question, again, yes, delinquencies are a little bit higher. But if you look at wages, right, real wages continue to increase more than inflation in the United States. The U.S. is still creating about 200,000 jobs a month. We expect that to continue. Uh, We're not saying it's a rip-roaring economy, but again, overall, if you want to get a job, you can likely still get a job. Final comment. Look at layoffs, right? Look at layoffs. We are not, Paul, seeing a surge in layoffs at all in the data that we are looking at. Uh, delinquencies, yes, they've gone a little bit higher. So there's there's some yin and some yang to all of this. But overall, um, you know, again, we just think it's more of a mid-cycle slowdown. And the key, put a cherry on this, the key comes down to the Fed cutting. Because what is slowing down in the economy here in the U.S.? Well, housing has been a big issue. And small business investment has been a big, been a big issue. 
if the Fed cuts multiple times, we may three, four cuts, you know, coming up here over the next six months or so makes sense. That could really uh, help those areas. And, and again, that can also help the consumer going forward. OK, with all of that in the background, a constructive uh, outlook on the U.S. economy, your overweight equities at Carson, and you have been for about a year and a half and you're not moving off that posture. That's right. We were we've been over at equity since December of 22. Obviously, a big chunk of last year that wasn't popular because everyone told us there was a recession coming, um, and it didn't. But but we just look at what just happened here in the U.S. Right? We just had an eight day win streak on the S and P 500. I know down yesterday. Hey, you can't go up every day. You know, keep this simple for the listeners, Paul. You don't see eight day win streaks in bear markets. So many people say it's a bear market rally. It's a bear market rally. Um, we'd say no. We're still in a structural bull market. We still have participation. There's a Seven sectors in the U.S. All eleven are up year to date. It's not just about seven stocks. It's not, not just about technology. Last week on Friday, on a weekly closing basis, financials and industrials closed at an all time high. Okay, that's a good thing. If you ask us, that's a good thing. We like industrials, we like financials, we like small caps and mid caps, the more cyclical areas of this economy that'll do well as we avoid a recession. Um, that's great. One final thing: regional banks. I mean, regional banks have been very strong lately. They make up a lot of small caps. Yes, but if there's a big monster under the bed, we would expect regional banks to be weak, to be under pressure. That's simply not the case. So it's kind of like, are you listening to what the market's telling you? It's broad based. It is a strong rally. We had an eight and a half percent pullback just recently in the U.S. on all the scary news that happened. It happens. There are bad days, even in your best years. But again, now we think it's kind of back to your regularly scheduled bull market. Uh, what about the uh, the uh, tech stocks? Where are you positioned there? The big ones. Okay. Yeah, we've been more neutral. We've been more neutral, large cap tech all year, because again, the valuations are high. AI is amazing what's going on there. But just look what happened this earnings season, right? Google and some of those companies didn't quite, um, you know, hit the ball out of the park with some of what they wanted to hear with AI and earnings. It was a little disappointing. I know AI has come flying back. The big big cap tech has come flying back, but they obviously hit the hardest. So we're more neutral, that group. Um, doesn't mean we don't like it. We'll be very clear. We've got a lot of tech in the portfolios that we run for our cars and partners. But when you look at it on a broad-based portfolio point of view, um, you know, we, we are more neutral neutral technology and overweight industrials, financial, small and mid cap specifically. In small and mid caps, what do you look for before you purchase yeah. a, a stock on behalf of clients? Yeah, well, we main, let's be very clear, we mainly purchase ETFs and mutual funds. But what we like about small caps specifically here, very cheap. Forward P multiples on the S&P 600 is like low double digits, okay? We know the S&P is significantly higher. If you look at earnings growth right now, sure, large caps growing faster than small. We get it. Look out a year, right? Earnings next year on the S&P 600 at small caps is supposed to be between 17 to 18% with mid -ca with large caps around 14 to 15. So in other words, more earnings growth. We expect that to continue and then the final thing and i know this is like lucy and charlie brown and the football pulled away and he always misses it we've seen these fits before where small caps do really well and kind of roll over historically paul the, the small caps start to really outperform we call it have alpha alpha versus large cap um, once the Fed starts cutting and the Fed, again, it, this, the stage is set, like we've already talked about. So we think there's some uh, they're cheap. There's more earnings growth. There's been, nobody wants to touch small caps. People hate them. Uh, for, so from a contrarian point of view, that's good. And I want to be very clear. Our largest overweight at Carson Group is actually mid caps, kind of slow and steady. Mid caps has done very, very well this year relative to what's going on. But once the Fed starts cutting with no recession, like we think, small and mid should do pretty darn well the next six to 12 months in our view. 